On the left side of the screen, you are looking at some miscellaneous figures spanning across Africa. Very many of these things, I guess you would call them geoglyphs, just very strange markings on the landscape, uh, roughly in these regions of Africa. And then on the right side of the screen, you're looking at some algorithm generated patterns, which I whipped up in uh, this computer program I use, Mathematica. And it just, it took me less than 24 hours just to, to do this. And here we see a bunch of similar patterns, I would say, basically just a uh, little, little goobity uh, nonsense burgers or um, I don't know what you'd call these things, little hats or <laughs> I don't know what they resemble, but boomerangs or something like that. So they're a bunch of derpy little patterns. And then, of course, we could uh, tweak them out in any number of ways. Like this this one is tweaked out in, in this image right here. So there's any number of ways to quickly generate uh, strange patterns. It's a pretty easy thing to do for anyone with uh, threshold knowledge of programming and just general geometry. And, uh, well, knowledge of reality helps as well. But um, I'm just trying to prove the point that it's not hard to do all this. And uh, scope or uh, breadth or the sheer volume of strangeness in our history, it's not that impressive once you get computers involved. Uh, so I'll just quickly reset this and just show you that it's pretty simple to just pop these out in... Uh, you know, I'm just making new ones every second, so just click it a bunch of times and you get a bunch of new ones. And obviously it might take a bit longer to build them. I'm just saying to generate the, uh, the patterns, uh, if your algorithm was good enough, you could really do, do it quite easily. And, um, and I'll tweak this last one out right here, you see. So there's... Uh, Uh, I guess one more time, I'm just making the point that there's a fairly straightforward way to create all this nonsense. Um, and uh, it just requires knowledge of what a feature is, what a thing is, what an attribute is, what characteristics are and how certain characteristics relate to one another inherently. Um, geometric principles, knowledge of just basic geometry and reality and shapes and the way, um, the way perception works in general, combined with access to supercomputers and some type of sophisticated construction device or implementing mechanism. Uh, which creates these, which actually doesn't moves the rocks or whatever. Uh, it wouldn't. It would be a pretty easy operation, is all I'm trying to say. So, on one level, this is all very impressive, and then on another level, it's repeatable quite easily. So, again, just generate, 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 and we get a bunch of these little guys, and then from there, it's just a matter of uh, building them. But you can imagine the same type of principle applying to uh, architecture or any number of things. Like this is a, a 2D image, but we could do this in 3D and whatnot. Okay, so this um, this article over here, this is from the uh, Land Before Time blog, and it's called The Eyes of Sahara in Africa. I may have shown these once or twice, I can't remember, but they're in these locations in Africa. And I think he speculates that they may be used for like controlling water or something similar. And I am just going to jump in here and say, I think they're most likely not functional. Like they weren't used for anything. They weren't aqueducts or, or irrigation devices. They weren't uh, any kind of controlling of water. They weren't agriculture related. They're not 
takeoff points or like landing pads or anything for UFOs or anything. These are really just patterns. <laughs> it's doodles. This is doodles in the desert. So that's what these are. They, their function is to be a doodle. It's like drawing, basically. It's for either deception and or self-expression and or like just as a uh, discombobulation, um, either to cause discombobulation in the beholder or potentially even as a result of discombobulation. So like, I guess the idea of uh, AI vomit or like a, an advanced computer program that uh, went haywire basically and spat out a bunch of nutso stuff. Or something like that. Yeah, it's just like four curves and I just combined them in a particular way, like parabolas and circles. And it probably took me longer than it should have, but it's pretty, it's just basically an afternoon's work. Okay, and then um, we could also apply the same principle to these uh, Jordan geoglyphs, or kites as they're called. These very large scale stone wall structures we've taken a, quite a few looks at. And um, just, we could imagine that if we combined some of these principles that are utilized in these images, like this type of graph and these networks and like a spider web and if we just combined some of these um, patterns or algorithms or strategies, we might get something like this. And I considered going ahead and doing it, but uh, I don't know whether it's laziness or just trying to save time and skip to the next topic. But I think you get the idea that we could just sit down and design a, a quick little computer program which could spit these things out quite easily. Just instance after instance, just new one after new one after new one. We could just generate hundreds or thousands of them at a time if our algorithm is good enough. So it wouldn't really take much to paint an entire landscape with this type of stuff really in the, um, the, the implementation part of it would be the bottleneck, I guess, like actually configuring the landscape into the patterns you generate. But even that could be done fairly quickly, I think. So I envision landscapes changing really fast, potentially, or even um, like in a matter of minutes or so, or even really slowly is another thing I've been thinking about. Like, what if these things like grow over time, like by some artificial means, but it would look like growth. So uh, like, what if there was like a 100,000 year time lapse of this patch of desert. And over that time lapse, we saw this thing slowly appear, but really it was like a very sneaky calculated depositing of rocks one by one over a, a very long time scale by some very patient author and uh, long-term process or algorithm. Okay. So, I mean, I think you get the idea. It's not hard to generate gibberish on a computer. That's, I mean, you probably already know that. It's not much of a point to prove. Okay, and then I'm just going to take you through some other things that this guy's showed on his uh, YouTube channel and um, his blog and his, his other pages. So uh, this is just a video on his YouTube channel. He's got good high quality images of a lot of these things. So uh, really it's once you've seen one, you've seen them all basically. It's just variations on a theme with, you know, with accompanying circles and blobs and blotches, all in particular types of variations that are suggestive of some type of uh, function when viewed in isolation or even when viewed side by side. But uh, ultimately they're devoid of purpose in my opinion. So these are uh, empty patterns more or less. Okay, so just wanted to run that video by you and okay, so here's one more th thing he showed. So this is the geoglyphs and uh, uh, stone walls topic still that we're exploring and these are 
big geoglyphs on the landscape, just nonsensical. See, this would be like a goddess figure with like these these circles are placed almost like like in, as a human feature with breasts. So again, this is like halfway between a human figure with breasts and like concentric circles with randomly placed circles. So this is like a feature bastard or like like the bastard child of two different aesthetics or uh, geometrical or artistic strategies. Okay, this is basically the same thing. And then we might also suspect that it's celestial or like trying to map the stars or something. So it, these are all splinters for attention, perhaps. So just gibberish, gibberish. I don't know where these are, but I kind of disagree that they these things had meaning. I think they're intentionally made to look like they had meaning, but ultimately uh, devoid of meaning. Okay, so it's just a bunch of silly patterns. And once again, we could imagine generating or writing a pr little computer program pretty quickly, which would just make a bunch of variations on these. And it, it wouldn't be hard to fill up, you know, a thousand pages with these goofy patterns. Okay, so next up we have, what is this? The ancient, uh, so I don't know, this is just an assorted series of images. So in the last tab, we saw images of this type of stuff, the uh, circles with the dots in the middle. So this is what they look like from above. And then uh, next tab, here's what they look like up close. So it's just arranged rocks. And so did people do these for like superstitious reasons or something like that? I mean, it's certainly possible, but I, I think it's a big head, head spin, big deception or big set of empty rabbit holes, dead end rabbit holes. Okay, so here's more of the winged boomerang things and just more random circle patterns, gibberish, 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 gibberish and gibberish circles within circles and sets of circles and variations on the, the density and the outline and just variations mapped to variations. Um, okay, so next up we have more gibberish. <laughs> so just the, this is yet another type of derpy, quirky little theme or uh, little geometrical motif with uh, like a little polygon with a uh, some little uh, fronds at the vertices or whatever you want to call these little uh, nublets or protrusions or um, branches at the vertexes and then this one's like maybe you could make the case that this is like 10 percent hominoid or whatever when viewed from this orientation like these could be perceived as legs on a cartoon figure or something like that so these are plumbuses, basically, in my opinion. So that's the story with geoglyphs. And if you wanted to stop watching this video, that would be the, the main takeaway uh, for the whole video, whole rest of the videos, that pretty much all the geoglyphs we're going to see are just plumbuses, basically, in that they are made to suggest a function, but they don't have a function. So, okay. Next up, we have... Stonehenge of Mali, Africa. Just a few images of this spot and same thing basically, same argument, more gibberish. So uh, in my opinion, just my opinion, but I'm right. <laughs> just kidding. I mean, maybe I'm kidding, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm 50% right, who knows? Anyways, the again, the circles of Ethiopia and up close, it's just piles of rocks, so. Uh, yeah, gibberish. And then what else? Okay, so this one is in Madagascar. He, I just, kind of off topic, but I just wanted to pull up a couple, uh, I was just browsing through his posts and uh, he finds a lot of great stuff on Google Earth. So I just wanted to acknowledge that and uh, show some of the stuff he finds. This is in Madagascar. And basically we've got these long straight lines scarring the landscape, uh, landscape sorry, and these deep uh, grooves 
or prominent streaks that are uh, they uh, they're mostly straight and then like for for a while they'll be straight and then they'll start to meander and then they'll be straight again so that's another one of the themes it's part of the derpification process and here we see it's just like a, a linear stretch of rock or a variation in the rock so it's like WTF and it's just just a little too contrived looking to be uh, a natural dike or fissure or fault line or something and there's too many of them uh, where's another one there's one over here that's pretty good here maybe yeah right here so we have we could see how contrived looking this is that does not look like a natural feature and then it emerges over here and looking fairly different or having some type of a variation along the path of whatever it is so it's not necessarily one uniform feature along the entire path that we see it although it may be um, but it is uh, a connected uh, or a long continuous path which um, has some uh, artificiality to it which in my opinion is just another variation on the gibberish and potentially even like a, uh, a booby trap or an attention trap in which case I'm an absolute fool for even studying it and acknowledging it. But uh, I do think there's at least some, some value in figuring out the true story once and for all. Okay, so let's move to the next tab, show you the next thing. So that was Madagascar. This one is in Lesotho, Africa, and it's just a big, long, linear, or mostly linear scar across these... Uh, the landscape here and this is not Google Earth so I'm not quite sure how to rotate uh, but uh, this right here this nice clean gap here see this with uh, artificial edges or fairly well-defined edges um, looking uh, contrived in my opinion so I think it's uh, either gibberish or like a, a deliberate clue or um, it continues here, you know, just outing themselves or or an experiment possibly, like <laughs> somebody uh, like placing a bet, possibly like a high stakes bet, like how long will it take people to figure out that the landscape is not legit, or like how long will it take a certain percentage of people to to believe it or to to figure out the, the real explanation or something like that. Um, who knows, any number of possibilities, but yeah, the whole landscape basically looking patchy, worked over, blah, blah, blah. Plenty of these lines, uh, some of them modern, some of them not. And, but the big large uh, scars through the rock are like this those are a feature of the landscape not modern editing so like this little ravine here this is so again this is his find not mine um, and this is another common thing we see like on the uh, the cusp or the uh, pointy uh, corner of a mountainside or hillside we'll often see right along the the corner or the edge of it we'll see some type of path or uh, groove like this like you see the fairly well-defined edges here just like cut right through the rock so something artificial going on and who knows how long that's it's been that way that could even be like all the artificialness could even be like recent tweaks or morphs uh, morphing which is phased in over a relatively short period of time like possibly even months or just or like decades or something like what if these lines have been slowly phasing into the landscape over the last 30 or 50 years or something like that you know what I mean like via some very patient uh, sophisticated high-tech algorithm and uh, implementation device so I mean there's the the possibility that earth has always been like this and here we see some of that very re weird stratification with like the lumpy bumps whatever whatever who cares we've we've already seen tons and tons of that but uh maybe this stuff is uh 
has always, the Earth's surface has always looked this way, and then maybe it uh, is a slow, ongoing thing, like, uh, and then maybe reality's even more fluid than that, like maybe we like shifted to a parallel reality or something at some point where the, the Earth is a little bit different, or who knows, I mean, too many possibilities to uh, say anything with any kind of certainty at this point, like how it got to be this way. I'm just showing that it is this way. And I, I think I have a half decent idea of the motives behind it, or at least the top two or three possibilities. Okay, so let's move to the next thing I wanted to show, whatever that is. And uh, <laughs> again, kind of unrelated, but uh, it is related to geoglyphs in the sense that it's the same type of gibberish strategy, just in a different medium. Uh, this would be art or sculpture, and it's in stone rather than like uh, arranged stones on the landscape like the stone circles are. Um, I think this is some type of Egyptian thing, and we just see the derpy face, which is, I would suggest, messed up or uh, defaced by the very people who created it. So it was brought into being already defaced. Uh, or it was defaced at some point subsequently after its creation as part of some script to continually revamp and shuffle things. So maybe this was created with a regular face and then 200 years later the same people came back and did that and maybe these holes were there from the beginning or maybe they were phased in or, you know, but the idea behind it is that it's, as a whole, it's gibberish, which bewilders and is not intended to add up to a coherent story. Okay, so I think, yeah, that's all for that for now. Um, let's jump over to Adobe Preview. And now let's move our attention to the Nazca lines. We've discussed this a little bit already. I just want to touch on it again in the context of this uh, geoglyphs and stone walls topic. You've probably heard of this area. It's got the deep or the uh, prominent lines, which don't really have a coherent uh, arrangement. Uh, more, more derp or more gibberish, more uh, deliberate mystery, in my opinion. And also, we have these goofy animal figures and abstract creature like figures. So a lot of uh, shit show stuff going on. And as we can see in this image, it's just stacked rocks basically, or arranged rocks. And they're pretty large scale. Like some of these figures are miles wide. And here we see just derpy exclamation points. So any number of possible interpretations, but just patterns in my opinion, not amounting to much. And this one is like, embodies the spirit of it perfectly, of what I'm talking about. Like, this is like 12 different animals in one picture. Or <laughs> Like, he's got like two sets of hind legs. Like, okay, let's say this is a bear or something. So he's got a set of hind legs here, like at a 90 degree angle to where it should be. And like another set here. It's got some type of, this is like, this thing right here. This is like 50% tail, 50% phallus. And then it's all, it also has a face on it. So, and then this is like another phallus or uh, genitals, or this could be perceived as genitals, or even like somewhere around this area. Uh, this could be intestines or a saddle or anything. And look, look at this nice front leg with the foot facing backwards. <laughs> so I think whoever did this certainly has a half decent sense of humor at least, or an interesting taste in uh, art. Okay, but yeah, it's feature salad, feature soup. It's not primitive inhabitants of the area or uh, early cultures or Mesozoic cultures or whatever they're called, like Mesoamerican. Um, it's not their attempts to express themselves in this uh, large scale medium on the landscape. It's not some superstitious effort to uh, appease the gods or like smoke signals to aliens or anything like that. It's not, uh, <laughs> it's like done by the ancient aliens to make us think it was done 
for or by ancient aliens or um, I mean that's one possibility among many but it's it's done by somebody who resides or uh, operates outside of human civilization or at least originally from outside of it and then um, within the earth environment they create all these deliberate mysteries and uh, gibberish um, okay so more patterns just spirals and lines not uh, like certainly looking like it could have been something but when you take a step back and and uh, really think about it it's like nothing it's not functional and same thing here just arrays of patterns features kind of slammed together and this could be a tree it could be a sun it could be you know a, a ufo beaming down a f on a farm or something like that it's 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 12 different things um and it's nothing all at the same time and then we have these guys these derpy little critters let's zoom in and see if like can you come up with an explanation for what this is I mean, is this, are these sun rays? Is this hair? Is this a face? Is it planets? It's deliberately ambiguous, in my opinion. And the, uh, the abstractness, the whole argument that people had more abstract art in the past because that's the best they could do, I think that's some type of false implant into our history or false narrative in order to give us a false sense of context. Okay, so just brief overview like all scattered across the landscape here's a general look at where these things reside just kind of scattered around we've got they're reminiscent of creatures but they're all tweaked out and they're like if you follow deep learning or machine learning or ai research at all you might have heard the phrase feature space so we could imagine like knobs or sliders tweaking out the Geometry, like if you took an original image of a small bird, like a sparrow or something, and then you tweaked some of the features with some moderately sophisticated algorithms, and you like averaged that with a pitchfork, or with a baby chicken, or something like that, or a potato, you might get something like this. So we're dealing with feature sex, or attribute soup, attribute morphing and ultimately perception warping. So, like this is not a real type of bird. It's like half airplane, half bird, half antenna, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then the length of the snout things are deliberately nonsensical and whimsical. This neck doesn't make any sense of this. Why does it have four wings? And so these are all painting a false picture of what early man does with their free time <laughs> they make these images no i don't think so and again the disconnect between the scale of these things and the the sheer volume the number of them and the scale of the lines as well the massive lines on the landscape miles and miles long and these things are found not just in peru but also in bolivia and elsewhere um, so the discrepancy between the derpiness of the artwork and the um impressive scale of the operation to create these is uh, the giveaway that they are not legitimate structures and uh, same thing with megaliths and a lot of stuff like that uh, here we have this guy just chilling you kind of get a sense of the scale of it just a huge thing that looks like it was drawn by a five-year-old so i don't think it's you know aztecs or inca or whoever just plopping rocks down for fun in hopes of like flagging down a spaceship or something. I think it's just uh, derpy false rabbit holes, potentially. Okay, and uh, this guy you may have seen, again, very poorly drawn uh, by design in my opinion. And again, these deep grooves or lines, which uh, are they runways for, for alien spacecraft? No, are they irrigation? No, are they roads? No, like trade routes, irrigation, any, everything like looks okay on the surface level. If you look at like an isolated stretch of any of these things, but it's the uh, cross-referencing of all the features in the area, which leads us to a, 
unifying explanation, I think. Uh, hopefully, anyways. And then just derpy triangles here. And again, it wouldn't surprise me if these lines have been here for like thousands of years, or if these lines are slowly being created continually. Because like every few years, you'll see a news article or hear a story that like, oh, new Nazca lines have been identified in some remote part of the Peruvian desert. Or uh, Nazca is a city, but like new geoglyphs or uh, similar. So new new giant figures have been found. Okay, well, how long have those been there? Were they just like, did somebody just create those like five years ago? You know what I mean? Or are they like slowly being created, like phasing in something like that? These are all uh, plausible in my opinion. So just a brief look at some of the different figures and the uh, these these grooves or lines. These reminiscent of some of the similar features in Jordan, just the cleared stretches of land with the rocks moved off to the sides. Um, so these are comprised mainly of uh, dug, dug out earth and also arranged rocks. So more of just the same stuff here, like it's kind of a tree, it's kind of coral, it's many things. This is like an ant with a very large tongue or something out of the side of his face, uh, or it's just nothing, and what are these rectangles? So the, the rectangle arms combined with the weird face and all that, again, it's just feature salad. It's combining stuff that doesn't belong together into a, an enticing, magical, mysterious, enchanting area of inquiry. Okay, so there's all this junk. There's this junk again with the weird long neck. This business, just a half decent look at the uh, the aerial view of the place, like these very, very long lines, these uh, very wide areas, and this trapezoidal feature here, or tapered aspect of it, that's again just ran more or less random variation as a way of spicing up the picture with uh, empty details. Okay, same same deal, just patterns, 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 patterns. We got birds, dir, dir, dir. Something's, something's doodling, um, parallel lines, doodle, doodle, doodle. And it's basically more of the same from here on out. We got this long lizard dude. So there's one narrative or explanation that it's like people's attempts to portray in art the environment they were actually witnessing. So like some, some conspiracy theory angles would say like, oh, it's the Mesoamericans attempting to portray the beings they actually encountered and uh, like make a record of it. But I don't think, number one, I don't think this is how you would do that. You wouldn't go making 10,000 foot long <laughs> uh, rock sculptures. And um, you'd probably try to do a better job. And then also, uh, these are so silly and nonsensical and also combined with the lines in the area that when you add all that up, it's like, that doesn't make any sense. So I do not think this is legitimate depictions of something that people encountered in the past. Uh, it's just patterns. So here we get a nice flyby from this Red Bull dude and we see the lines from above just kind of landing here and decent look at this bird guy. And here's one more look at the bird guy. I'm not sure if this is highlighted or whatever's um, in like post-processing in the image, but it's pretty clearly defined. Like, I, I think that is how it actually looks. It's So see how crisp this looks? and how white and new. So I wonder whether this was just, somebody just created this like in the last 50 years or 100 years or so, um, or maybe it was like slowly created by like high tech depositing rocks one by one over a very slow time period. That could be as well. Um, chase me, I'm a juicy mysterious rabbit hole. Chase us and tickle us. We like turtles. 
Relax, you can trust us. We were drawn with great skill. No, it's this way though. Follow me. This place needs a dick butt with pitchfork feet. Guys, wait up. Wait for me. Derp, derp, slurp. We come in peace and for Hugwa gods. I too, yes, also do. And you get, you get the picture there. Uh, those are my little <laughs> nerdy skit. But um, it's silly, silly derp. Nothing, uh, just a bunch of crazy, quirky, goofy figures. Like, look at this T-Rex thing. <laughs> or a bird or something. It's all silly. Like this especially, just what the WTF. WTF salad is what we are dealing with. Okay, so this dick butt guy, one more look at him and <laughs> quick comparison to this rock in Colorado we looked at a few videos back. Uh, pretty similar stuff, like this rock even, and this is a fairly remote area of Colorado, like off the beaten path a little bit, and uh, uh, it's got a, a hole in it, which is just kind of a random feature, and this as a whole, this, this is just a random combination of features or... Um, a silly combination of features, uh, all amounting to this type of uh, spirit or um, aesthetic or whatever. It even has a butt crack in the back, and then it's it's just like got weird curves to it. So natural rock, meh, I doubt it. And yeah, like this right here, this uh, phallus or dick feature is like very similar to that feature there, and it's the whole thing is. Uh, kind of echoed here just in variation and in a different medium like even these bumps on the face are just like arbitrary variations and this curve in the back or the <laughs> the spinal curve here is like some type of variation on the uh, the dick butt <laughs> um, aesthetic <laughs> I can't I can't stop laughing it's uh again whoever did all this has a half decent sense of humor. And one more remark on this image. Um, so a lot of these uh, truth drop places, as we might call them, or the, uh, the anomalous places, they're quite a ways off the beaten path or off the, uh, the trail or the road. So there's some effort barrier required to get to these places. And we can imagine any number of reasons for that being the case. One, because they had to make it, whoever did this had to make it discoverable, but they didn't want uh, people to discover it too fast. So they put stuff in re more remote areas. That's a possibility. I think there may be some truth to that. Let's see what else. Uh, just as a way of uh, making it more mysterious, again, the idea of rarity or scarcity or making it... Uh, like requiring an investment to go find these things and to look at them and to study them. That's yet another way of yanking someone into a line of inquiry or a, a whole life path, basically, or even timeline. So you might yank someone off their path into a study of ancient gibberish, which isn't even real, by making it difficult to find this gibberish by placing it in remote locations. So, again, the idea of the effort barrier required to find these places, or the investment, uh, it's a well-known like marketing tactic to uh, make your customers or clients invest as a way to retain them. So, if you want someone glued to this chasing of rabbit holes, you might put the anomalies in more remote locations, or at least some of the anomalies. So again, whatever algorithm is behind this uses many, many, many strategies as a way of accomplishing whatever it's trying to accomplish. So the, the remoteness of these places may be one of those strategies. Okay, so let's keep going. And uh, okay, we got our dick butt guy. And similar to the Nazca lines in Peru, we have the Blythe Intaglios. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but basically same deal. Uh, these, I could imagine being conventional Native American artworks, possibly, but 
uh, not in my opinion. I think it's just another slight aesthetic variation on the, the same type of phenomenon as the lines and figures in Peru. So this image, we know that this figure has been there since at least 1932, assuming we can trust the, the image and the source of it. So some of these have been present on the landscape, at least for a hundred years or more. So yeah, that's one hint as to the true age of these things. Um, okay, here's a look at this up close. And we see this one's made of much smaller rocks. So it's a slight variation. Again, just many different types of patterns in many different modalities and mediums and stylistic varieties. So here we have just a random set of parallel lines with a guy with squiggle arms and a random oval and a foot here. <laughs> and some of these are, I think, are tire tracks, but I think some of these lines and curves here are actually like doodles or just more random patterns. So uh, just uh, arrangements of rock or small displacements of rock. I think that might be some of what these uh, curved lines are, like these and this, these circles. Uh, and then again, these, these patchy lines here, kind of reminiscent of what we see in Jordan near the kites, just the haphazard path or trail-like or angular, linear, patchy bits of land. And then this guy or lady, that's the, the sparse hair and the, the nice one line for a flute. So it's like someone spent all this time to do it and then they drew it so poorly. I don't know. It's striking me as nonsense. Okay, we've got the steppe geoglyphs in Kazakhstan. I already touched on these in a previous video at some point. So just burn through these real quick. Just cross. Uh, these are mounds, like mounds of rock. And in some cases they are... Uh, dug out grooves or displaced earth. So it's arrangements of rock and displaced earth into these strange formations. And again, all amounting to uh, nonsensical patterns, in my opinion. And yeah, a couple more of them here. We've got the X and the square around it and fairly large. And this is somebody's interpretation of it. And I would say that's all just, uh, again, it's designed to be ambiguous in its interpretability, in my opinion. And even these lines off to the side here and some of these mounds, I think, are part of it. They're just less prominent. So it's pattern soup on the whole landscape with islands of more prominent or noticeable patterns. So a circle, if I remember correctly, there's like over 260 of these formations, and this is just a few of them, and uh, they exist. <laughs> Kazakhstan is where these are, and we've got these variations on the circles, and we see the fainter ones here, these faint circles or mounds. We've got little circles here. We might suspect that these are like representing stars or something, or they're old fire pits, or like old homesteads or like the footprint of an old house or something, or just art or documentation or uh, signaling somebody or any number of superstitious things. We've got like this three pronged swastika looking thing with these little spirals. And this is just a feature variation on the idea of a spiral or a spiral like pattern. Again, it's all pattern soup features mapped to styles mapped to mediums, like the medium of a, a geoglyph or the medium of a sculpture. It's all a grand deception of goof.